Hey guys, it's Ender here from the Digital Storm Forums. The first thing we're going to go over in this video is resetting your CMOS battery. You'll see this reference in a lot of tech guides. Uh, basically what this does is resets your BIOS options to default. If you've changed your BIOS version at all, this won't go back a version, but it will restore all the default options if you can't boot properly or if you change something and you can't find it, anything like that. The easiest way to do this on a lot of more recent motherboards is you can find on the rear panel a small red button that will say reset CMOS battery. Just turn your computer off all the way. Find a paper clip or a pen, something to press that with for about 3 or 4 seconds. Turn it back on and your BIOS is going to be reset. Another option is you can go inside the case and there can be a separate button that looks the exact same on the inside. Do the same thing, turn your computer off hold the button in for about two or three seconds when you boot up your BIOS is going to be reset to default options if you don't have either of these options you can also remove the actual CMOS battery itself which will do the same thing you may need to remove a sound card or a video card to get to it but it's a nickel sized battery you can see it here all you need to do is pop it out of place there should be a small clip on one side of it, it should be pretty easy to see take the battery out, leave it out for about 10 to 15 seconds, put it back into place, it does the same thing as the button. Next I'm going to show you a start to finish on reformatting or initially installing Windows on your computer. When you first turn the computer on you're going to get this prompt that says press a button to enter setup or to enter BIOS. In this case it's delete so we press that and it'll take us to this menu here. You want to look for anything that says boot, boot configuration, boot options, advanced boot options, anything that has boot. We're going to go in there and look for the boot device priority. We want to set this to whatever optical drive or whatever available drive we have that we're going to install Windows from. Usually it's going to be from Windows DVD. So we're going to choose the optical drive off of this list. At this point it's a good idea to go ahead and open up your tray, pop the Windows DVD in there, close it up and then choose whatever option you have in your BIOS for saving and exit. In this case, it's F10. As soon as you press that, your computer is going to restart again. Don't press anything. Let it do its thing. It's going to give you a prompt here which will say press any key to boot to CD or DVD. So just go ahead and hit spacebar or whatever. This will initialize Windows. You're going to be booting directly to your disk, not to your hard drive. This allows you to format your hard drive and then put Windows on it. The options here are very straightforward. You basically choose your time zone. You say install now. It'll go ahead and start everything up for you. This next part, it'll vary if you're installing for the first time or if you're reformatting, but the general consensus after you read the EULA here, which I'm sure all of you will read top to bottom, the general consensus will be that you want to remove everything on here that's pre-existing and only install on unformatted space. Choose custom and then any partition or any individual drives that you want to erase forever, choose advanced options on the right and click delete. It's not actually doing it, it's queuing it to be done so you can actually back out at this point if you see something wrong but once you're down to only unallocated space then go ahead and click next and it'll start installing. Keep in mind that this is not something that you can go back from. As soon as you do this, you have lost everything that was on those drives. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable AHCI so that you can boot properly to your solid state drive if you're having boot issues. You want to go into Advanced Settings and choose your IDE configuration. Configure SATA as AHCI. You're done. Just hit Save and Exit. 